In this video, I'm gonna tell you what I thought about Deadpool 2. If you're new to my channel and wanna see movie reviews, parenting and life videos, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it so you don't miss anything. In the comments below, I really wanna know, are you into this fourth wall breaking, irreverent, foul mouth anti-hero, or do you think Deadpool is somewhat overrated? So in this sequel, basically Deadpool teams up with some mutants in order to help protect a young boy who also has powers from the time traveling mutant named Cable. So I'm personally a Deadpool fan. I was really excited when the first one came out, and again, I didn't know much about him. And once I learned about what this character was, I was really excited to see the movie and was not disappointed in any way. I really loved the first Deadpool. So when I started to see teaser trailers and then just the official trailers come out and all the promotion that surrounded Deadpool 2, was really, really excited to go see it and I really wasn't let down. And I love that Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. He was so passionate about this character and getting this film made and doing all the promotion for it and I think that really comes across in both of these movies. I mean, Ryan Reynolds himself kind of has a self-deprecating humor. He doesn't take himself seriously. So I think he's perfect to play Deadpool. I really can't picture any other actor being this character at all. And I kind of feel like it's like what the Russo brothers are to Marvel. From what I've read about them, they want to stay true to the comic books. And you can see their passion and kind of like their fanboyness through the movies. And I think that's a huge reason why those movies are really successful as well. So while I really liked Deadpool 2, I didn't like it as much as the first, but I think that's pretty much par for the course for most sequels. The second one for some reason is just really hard to top and then you can kind of come back around with the third depending on the movie. So they made a lot of Logan references in this movie that completely went over my head because I have not seen Logan. I know, I know, I need to see this movie so don't go ahead in the, in the comments and tell me how much I need to go see it because I know. But having said that, to me there was like a big spoiler in the fact that Logan was killed. So they had this one little scene, I turned to my husband, I'm like, so is that why the movie's so sad? And he's kind of like, yeah. But you know, I'm, I can't even be mad because it's my own fault for not having seen Logan. I mean, it's been out for a while now, so again, it's on me, not on the movie for spoiling anything. So while I touched on a negative, let me just start with those and then I'll get into the positive stuff because I'd rather leave you with the positive stuff instead of the negative. And honestly, there weren't really that many negatives for me. I did mention I liked the first one better, but just slightly. It really, this really didn't have any glaring issues for me. The biggest issue I had was just that the story kind of felt scattered for most of the movie. I didn't really know where they were going and there wasn't really like a main villain. They kind of focused on these three characters Cable being one, the, the young boy with the mutant powers named Russell being the second, and then a third that I'm not gonna spoil for you. So while the previews kind of made it seem like Cable was gonna be the main bad guy, that really wasn't the case in the movie, and it took a while for it to finally all come together. Another negative was that there wasn't as much Terry Crews as Bedlam as I was hoping for. I really think that we saw more of him in the trailers than we did in the actual movie, so I was so bummed out about that. And the third minor little thing Thing was that honestly Deadpool got his butt kicked way more than he kicked butt. So at the very beginning they showed some scenes of him doing his Deadpool thing which was fun. He really got his ass handed to him a lot by a bunch of different characters. He definitely made that funny too especially because he's Deadpool and has a really you know he really can't die. So to see like all these things happen to him and then he's able to recover from was definitely like a different spin on it. But at the same time, I kind of miss seeing those fight scenes that he's in because he's also hilarious when he's kicking some bad guy's ass too. And now I wanna roll into what I really liked about the movie. I thought this one was way more meta and self-aware than the first one. I like that they just went all in for that. And I think this kind of movie is really refreshing. It's almost like a palate cleanser after having seen Marvel's Infinity War because that movie was so intense, so story-driven, and so serious that I love that this was completely different from that. So kind of piggybacking off of what I just said about all the 
comic book references. I just loved how many there were in this one. I, again, I feel like there were just a lot more than in the first movie. And on top of all the comic book character references, there were also tons of pop culture references, which were really fun to follow. And my personal favorite was the one I willy comment. Along with the obvious pop culture and comic book references, there were also a bunch of blink and you'll miss them references, like the Vanisher reveal, the Stan Lee cameo, and one of the rednecks in the movie. These kind of little tiny quick moments are fun because it gives you a reason or another reason to rewatch the movie and see if there's anything else that you may have missed the first time around. And like in the first one, the music was really, really good. I loved every song that they picked and there was this sort of almost like a running joke of dubstep so that was kind of like interwoven in at really great moments and I just loved every song that was picked up. So earlier I mentioned that the storyline seemed somewhat scattered and there wasn't really a clear-cut main villain but that's okay. I don't think every superhero or comic book movie needs to be an end of the world scenario because that can take away from the intensity when you have movies like that. Now I know I mentioned Infinity War and, and that was totally appropriate. They had been leading up to this you know, massive event for 10 years. So with something like Deadpool, it's really nice to kind of step back and not have it be this like global event that he's trying to stop. I think that would be really weird for a movie like this. So while in a way it was kind of a negative because I had a hard time figuring out where they were going, eventually they did bring it together. I really don't like comparing superhero movies in general because so many of them are so different in so many ways that to me it's not really comparing apples to apples which is why I don't do ranking videos or generally try to compare these kind of movies. So for me, I really enjoy Deadpool. I like it for what it is. It's entertaining. It, it can just be time out of your day, time out of your night to sit back and just enjoy something and you don't have to get too wrapped up in it. You don't have to get too invested in it. And it's just pure entertainment. And that's what Deadpool is for me. I don't take it too seriously. The movie itself doesn't take itself too seriously. So I don't really feel like viewers should take it too seriously. So so for me, it was really fun. It was a really enjoyable movie. I would recommend that you go see it. If you want to see more movie reviews, parenting, and life videos, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.